You know, that's a that's a loaded question. I'm going to do my very best to keep this strong, not long. Um, But I think one of the pieces is the cultural awareness, you know, um, and I and I can't remember which of the professionals mentioned this earlier, but a lot of us go through programs that we have this cultural competency trainings and these diversity and equity trainings and, you know, these biases. Everybody does not walk away from there being an ally, okay? Everybody does not walk away from those experiences having a keen awareness that they have privilege, that they need to stand on the front lines in front of the marginalized populations and stand in the gap. Everybody does not walk away from those experiences. And I think that's why it is important to be able to lean in on professionals that look like you, just because at the end of the day, And I'll even speak from personal experience. You can walk into a space with a professional that does not look like you and you can deal with the same microaggressions and the same traumas that you deal with outside of the space where you're trying to heal. And I think that that is something that's very keen. A lot of times people don't feel like that they can be open and honest with someone that looks like a person that has oppressed them or a person that's taken away an opportunity from them or has sabotaged the opportunity. And so I think that it's a sacred space it's a safe space um, for sure. And I think that, again, every all skin folk and kin folk. So let me also go ahead and point that out as well. Um, but I think that one of the things that's very keen is having someone that looks like you, that has awareness and is able to create that safe space and create that honest conversation. Because I think at the end of the day, all of us go through different experiences. All Black people aren't a monolith, right? I know a lot of people want to say, oh, all Black people that are educated or, you know, in, in the upper, you know, upper class and, you know, they they talk very sedity and, you know, they're not able to eat with us. You know, they'll, they have a lot of those assumptions. But I think one of the things that's key is people will be very pleasantly surprised how many people don't even support Black mental health professionals. Because there's an assumption also when you go into professional spaces that, you know, again, we've had these stigmas of being unprofessional or these stigmas of we're not as highly qualified. And so I think that, again, we are debunking those myths. I think we are being able to make people aware that there are highly qualified professionals that also knows about your culture that can also have these keen and very honest and real conversations with you. So I think that it is highly critical not only for our community to be able to heal and thrive, but also to be able to support the Black professionals that have stood in the gap, that have gotten that education and have had to deal with a lot of oppressive systems to get educated, that has had to deal with a lot of being, I'm the only one, I'm the first one, you know? And so I think it's really keen because at the end of the day, you can have that same experience and that professional will be able to navigate you through Um, more effective treatments, um, not just by textbook, not what you just learned in school, but be able to go by and say, you know what, I have had these previous experiences. It might be my own personal experiences or, or experiences with customers and patients that look just like you that I can be able um, to help you navigate in an effective, in a real way um, to be able to heal.